This world <laughs> encourages us to rush. And God commands us to rest. So how are we doing with that? Why don't we rest more? Why does it seem so hard for us to rest? And I'm going to start with some assumptions that that is true of you. That they're, they're, you're not living in the perfect place of bliss at this moment. And if you are, then you can talk to me about it later, or you can leave. Whatever. But, but he's bringing us to a place through this process of resting in him. Because when he started the planet spinning, when he shaped it and formed it, when he took all the chaos that was about beginning in him and said, I, it's good, it's very good, and we tend to act like it'd be very good if we get a couple more things done. Anybody know what I'm talking about here? I'm just talking to myself. You guys get to listen in. But that idea that, that the busyness that we sometimes embrace can really mess with our spirit. You really mess with your ability to, within relationship with him and with each other. And so today we're going to come to a passage where we continue talking about resting, that he commanded us to do this. And uh, we're going to come to three commands and three promises that I think can radically change your life. You're just These are not new words. I, I rarely teach anything new. <laughs> I just keep pointing back to the stuff he's already told us and say, hey, are are, are we going to embrace this? But um, the word warns us about not resting. It rebukes us about worrying. And it chides us about rushing (laughs) all the while, all the while inviting us to be resting in him. So turn with me, if you would, to Matthew chapter 11. These are some of the passages we we could not go to from Genesis chapter 2. There's actually quite a few. uh, But when I believe that he is enough... I can rest in him. And I I say that today as 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 an invitation because we're all in this process. And and some of us have learned to rest some things with him, (laughs) and we don't rest some other things. You know, there's that child in your life that you're still not resting on. (laughs) There's that situation at work that you're still not resting on. There's that, he's enough. And Jesus invites us to be resting in him. We talked about last week, the rest is a choice. It's a a faith choice. It's not because I see it all is done, but because he said it's all good, and he's good, and then I can rest in that. So let's look at at Matthew 11, 28 to 3, 28 to 30, and and we're going to see in there three commands, three promises, and, and just, what is he saying to you about relating to him? All right? It says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. I mean, it's the first time you've ever heard that. No, you know that truth. You've read that truth. You've prayed that truth. You've claimed that truth. And yet oftentimes, we don't necessarily walk in that truth. But there are some commands and there are some principles here. And he starts it off 
with a very simple declaration. We see it as invitation, but I, I want you to understand, if you read it from the original, it is not an invitation, it's a command. And I don't know about you, but in my house there was a difference between invitations and commands. Some of you raised with parents that way, you know, hey, they say, hey, if you'd like, you can do this, but they say, hey, this needs to get done, you need to get it done. So, so he says, come to me. If you have never done that, this is the most important invitation I can give to you today, is to come to Jesus Christ. He said, come to me. It's so interesting because when, when, when we read some of this stuff, it's like, okay, we've read it before, we don't even hear it again, and go, wait a second, he didn't say come to God. He, he didn't say, say come to, this, to, the, to the synagogue. He didn't say come to church. And, and all those were good. Or we're not gonna, but he said, what? He said, come to me. I want to have a relationship with you. It's an it's amazing thing that he would invite me to come, but it's, a, it's, it's an astounding thing, honestly, to think about. He's commanded me to come. He, he, we will have this relationship. And we know there, there will come a day, right, when we will come to him, we will all stand before him. So, so that day's coming. <laughs> Can we rest in him? So I want you to understand, as, as I look at this, one of the first things is that, that coming to Jesus is a daily choice to trust him. Because, and we get here, and Jared and I were talking a little this morning, this, this, this may go just not, not, I've never went long in the service, but uh, the service that we're talking about may, may take more than what we're going to get to today. Jim, years ago, Jim told me, hey, slow it down. Don't be in such a hurry. So I'm, I'm going to try and do some of that. It kind of goes along with this idea of resting, right? But, but this idea of saying, if I'm going to come, I need to make a daily choice. And, and we make a whole bunch of daily choices, don't we? And how often have you found, because I have certainly found it, that my choices are not bringing me closer to him. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Lord willing, we're going to talk about some of that more next week. But, but knowing him is not necessarily the same as coming to him. You know, affirming the value of who he is is not necessarily the same as coming to him. My wife fixes awesome meals for me. Um, but how many times, and this is George was talking about me, there's, there's, the guilty parties in the room, we're not talking about you, okay? But, but how many times has she said, come, hey, 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 it's dinner time. <clears throat> and you're pretty slow about the coming. And we say something without meaning to, we say something to the person who's prepped that meal by the way you come, don't we? You know? And, you know, I, I, I find this slightly reversed with some of the things that, that our family has been embracing. And, and so doing a little more of that myself, and you're like, hey, wait a minute, I got it all hot, and Jesus never says, oh God, you didn't come. But he does say, come. So, so, so there's not this sense of impatience that you're going to have from him because you didn't come, but there is this urgency in his heart, in his word, that says what? We are to come. And it's amazing is that he promises he promises me, and he promises you. I don't care. You're, you're listening. I, I may never meet you. I'm telling you, this is the truth. He promises you this. Did you hear it? Come to me, all you are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Is Jesus a liar? Never. Never. 
Never could happen. Then why do we not come? See, there, there's this unbelief in him and his promise that oftentimes resonates. <laughs> and, and we're trying, if you're anything like me at times, trying to control our little world. How are you doing with that, by the way? <laughs> You know, our, our nation is coming apart at the seams. Our world is coming apart at the seams. And someday, he's coming for us. He's, he's got a plan. He's still working it out. But in that spot, will I come? Will I rest? Psalms 37, 7. The whole psalm talks about this. But, but this one verse, if you'll read it with me, it just is one that's resonated a lot with me. It says, rest, read it with me, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way because of the man who carries out wicked schemes. Oh, you, you, you don't do that, right? Fret, you know, no, no, no fretting. You know, you know, even when the guy's playing a guitar, what's he doing? He's putting tension, <laughs> pressure, point. I'm not saying because of the person who's not cooperating with God. He says, I want you to be a person who's resting. Oh, and then they come up with this. You know, our, your Bible, does your Bible bother you at times? <laughs> and wait patiently for him. You, you automatically, when you read this, say, oh yeah, that's right. That's, that's what I do. I wait patiently for him. My God is so faithful. He's so good. Why is it so hard for us to wait? And what I see is you read through this psalm, you know, that whole idea of fretting is because people and circumstances are beyond our control. But they're never beyond His. That's why we come to Him to rest. Because you're facing situations, and, and, and it, it may be political, it may be economic, it may be medical, and you're saying, this, this is out of my ballpark. Is there anything that's in your ballpark? I mean, there are some things he tells us to do, but there's an awful lot that's beyond us and says, can I rest in him? All right? Listen. Matthew 6.33, you know, some of my earliest verses that... The Lord impressed upon my heart, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And I've told you, you know, my, my motivation was a lot. Is I, the Lord took my heart and, and trained me in promises. I, I had the wrong perspective about those promises, but he went ahead and trained me anyway. And then as time went on, you begin to discover what it meant, you know. But you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things no, what was, you know, a 16-year-old or a 17-year-old thing? All these things. All these things. Everything that can make you anxious, he'll take care of that. So, so I rest because he, he handles it. But for me, and I think for you, it's a daily choice. It's an event-by-event event choice. It's a person-by-person person choice. It's a conversation-by-conversation conversation choice. It's a thought-by-thought thought choice. So will I rest? Or will I become anxious? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? And there are certain people that make you feel this way, and you've learned to avoid some of them. Rather than resolve that issue, you just, oh, I've resolved it, all right? I don't talk to them no more. They don't bother me anymore. We, we all face these situations, but can I come to the spot where... He says, I will give you rest. Well, how do I have to come? Well, well, he points something out in there. We kind of just read right past it. Maybe, maybe we don't. But he says, all who are what? Weary and heavy laden. Weary and heavy laden. You see, there are conditions for you to discover his rest. And what I have found is it seems pretty rare for us to come to him unless we're desperate. And unless there's some situation that's pushing up against you and you're like, oh God, you're so good. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Right? It's, it's when everything's going well, 
Thanks. Thanks for blessing my day. It's been good to see you for a moment before I... He invites us to come and rest. Will I find my relaxation in Christ with the situations that you're facing at work, with the situations that you're facing in your life group, with the situations you're facing in your marriage? Will I, will I rest in him? I, I, I make some jokes about this, ladies, but I, I really do appreciate the beauty that you bring to our houses. But pillows that aren't used for rest oftentimes don't seem to make sense to men, right? Like, pillows can be everywhere. But we don't use them for rest. We use them for decorations. And oftentimes, even the promises of God can be like pillows in your house. There's all these beautiful things that you could rest in. It's just a decoration. It's in your theology. It's, it's there. R.C. Ryle put it this way. He said, you'll never come to Christ unless you feel your need. And unless you recognize that you are the person he's inviting when he says, weary and heavy laden. What I have discovered, it's not quite as pretty as R.C. Royal, <laughs> but you will not come to him unless you recognize that you love your sin more than your Savior. I like being this busy. I like being in control. I, I like... I can't turn to him and rest if I think I'm totally competent of taking care of it myself. Does anybody identify with what I'm talking about or am I just talking in front of you here? He says, I will give you rest. He does not say, I can or I could or I might. He says, I will. There's a promise there. But God offers hope to you and you might be here and saying, you know what? I am weary of religion. I'm weary of failures. I'm really of faking it. I, I, I'm exhausted by my sin. But that doesn't mean you come. If you're aware of it, it means you, you're invited. But that is, the coming is a choice. The, the God can be taking you through this time of testing that you're in. By the way, I'm just assuming that because you're there's only three positions you can have in relationship to tests, isn't it right? You are coming on to one, you're in the middle of one, or you're coming out of one. Because this life is what? It's a test. We're, we're just boot camp to glory. Hallelujah. We're, we, we've got a destination we're going to. We're, we're going to be tested all the way. I don't know about you, but I've, I've been pastoring here for 33 years. It's a little, little vulnerable here, but there is a parishioner that's been irritating me for 33 years. I, I know them pretty well. They, they love the Lord. They love his word. And I am constantly frustrated by him. And his name is James Downing. Do you know what I'm talking about? That the, that the person that needs to rest in Christ is the person who oftentimes is proclaiming Christ. Why is it that sometimes pastors, or if you go into the medical field, the doctors, the, the people who know best about this stuff in their head are sometimes the least likely to practice this stuff in their life. So I don't say this as someone who's walking in, in ultimate and complete victory, but I say this as someone who continues to be drawn to the person that I'm resting in. <laughs> because there is no rest apart from finding your rest in Jesus. There's not. It's, it's not there. there. There's things you can rest in. You put enough of that stuff down, you will rest. <laughs> right? 
Take a couple more, you can rest. There's a whole bunch of different ways that the world has invented for us to find rest. But it's not Jesus. I'm going to tell you something. I can't help you. But I know the Savior who can. His name is Jesus Christ. That's the person who brings us to a place of rest. Jesus will give you rest if you will come to him. Oswald Chambers, some of you have enjoyed his writings. He says, personal contact with Jesus alters everything. And so, that's, that's why I have to start with Jesus. You know, we don't want to see James... <laughs> Before he's seen Jesus. He's still working on me, right? He's still doing this transforming thing. And he wants not just a break, but a change. Our world lacks hope. It lacks rest. It lacks peace. But Jesus lacks Does that overwhelm you at times? It's like, nothing? How how come I'm not more at peace with that? Because the command's been made. The promise has been given. There's only for us to, to what? To respond to him. 29th verse. He goes at it again. We move to our next command, the next promise. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. Take my yoke? What? Who's he speaking to? The person who's weary and heavy laden and the next thing he says is what you need is a better backpack. That's, this is what we call in Scripture a paradox, isn't it right? He says, what I want to do is load you down with something. I want to load you with the right thing because you're already loaded with the wrong thing, all right? He says, here's the second command. First one is what? Come. The second is what? Take. You see it right here? All right? He says, take. Taking his yoke is part of receiving his rest. See, that goes totally contrary to the way we think. You want God's gifts, not God's guidance. We want God's love, but we oftentimes resist God's lordship. And what's the paradox? That he says what? Take my yoke upon you. It it seems like it ought to be really clear. I was reading it in somebody's book the other day, and and he said it, and I went, yeah, duh. But he says, a yoke is how you bear a load. How are you bearing your loads? What are you yoking yourself to to try and pull what he's Put in your life. You know, we think of a yoke, we're not talking about an egg. <laughs> we're talking about an ox, just, just in case I lost a couple of you. I was somewhere back there at breakfast. You know, we're talking about being yoked, but the interesting thing is, a yoke was never. You're yoking two together. Take my yoke upon you. So, I want you to be joined to me together in this process. So so taking his yoke is a part of receiving his rest. I'm going to go this way with him, and I'm going to walk it out with him. But to do that, 
I've got to be in subjection. See, how, how you become yoked? I, I have to let him harness me. I left, let him restrain me. I, he's going to then give the direction in my life. We tend to come to God for advice. <laughs> yeah, do you want to do this or not? As opposed to come to God for direction. It's a command that says, hey, this is the way you're supposed to do it. And he says what? He says, he didn't make this a suggestion. The command says, take my yoke. So trust in my life is the idea of what? I will submit myself to his direction. And I've read my Bible. It says I'm supposed to do it with joy. Right? With gratitude. That I'm giving thanks in every situation. If you're yoked to Jesus, right? That is what he is doing. Join yourself to that. That's how, that's how he's living his life. It, it wasn't that it wasn't a full life. Have you read your Gospels? He, he had some pretty full days. It, we're not talking that there wasn't physical exhaustion. He fell asleep in the back of a boat which began to sink, and he was fine. <laughs> that also is a definition of peace, by the way. We won't go there that sermon. But there's a rest when I find full rest, only when I what? When I trust Christ. He says, take my yoke. What, what, what that means is that I can choose a different master than I'm currently following. If, if I'm the one who's weary and heavy laden, if I'm the one who's being drugged through the mud, he says, take my yoke, I've got something for you. As a follower, as a disciple, as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, he says what? He says, take my yoke. There's an awful lot of situations where we try to put too much in our hands. You know, make some great memes on the internet. You know, people dropping their stuff or people falling down or all these different situations we put ourselves in because we're trying to take something, but we haven't done what? Let go of something. If your hands are already full, if your life is already full of your stuff, you don't have a space to be yoked in because you're already yoked to something else. Listen, I don't find rest just doing my own thing. He says, how do you find rest? You take his yoke. The image is not of an ox, and some of you have got the calf thing going on, a few cows at the house. There is nothing funner in the, in the early spring. You let open that gate, and that calf is just kicking up its heels, it's just running through. It's not yoked. That's kind of what we think. So if I just come to Jesus, I can just kick through the fields and do it how I want. No, he says, yoke yourself to me. I've, I've got a plan. I've got a purpose. I'm harnessed to him for his labor. I, I, I'm to be yoked that I might be directed by my master. And the image has to come there is what? It's surrender. Whether it's a, it's a cow, whether it's, you know, some of you have dealt more with horses, you know. But there's a reason why they don't necessarily always want to take that bridle. <laughs> All right? they, they've got their own will. They've got their own perspective. It's like, you know, I used to have a horse. I did not know. I never did figure out how she could spit the bit, you know. And then pretty soon it was dump the rider. <laughs> and all of a sudden you find what? This, this animal that's supposed to be taking me someplace is what? Is ditching me. They, they rebelled against me. And have we not done that with the Lord? I'm not submitted to what you want. But when I'm yoked to him, I go through life two ways. I want you to think about this. Jesus is at my side. And I'm at the side of Jesus. 
Is that how you're living life right now? You're recognizing that what, whatever he has put in your field to plow, and some of us, you know, it, it continues to change, right? Like, can I turn that over to him? Can I find my rest when it's not the way I thought it would be? Jowett says, I never intended, God never intended for man to carry his burden alone. Rest is found not just in being free, but in belonging and yoked to the one who sets you free to do his will. That's where satisfaction's found. <laughs> this may be obvious, but that's James, Captain Obvious. That's what my son says sometimes. Thanks, Captain Obvious. <laughs> you can't do the Jesus life without Jesus. Pretty obvious, but we try, don't we? I I'm trying to be like Jesus without resting in him, without fully being yoked to him. But it is this lifestyle. It's not a list. It's, okay, I've done these Jesus things today. I'm good. No, I'm What's he going to say? Take my yoke upon you, and, and there's another command here. Learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. Learn from me. Because we don't do this life alone, if we're doing it with him, he's showing you. If you're yoked to him, he already knows how to do this. Can I trust him? Well, I trust him. I, I need to learn this process. I, I mean, again, Captain Obvious right here. You have never been this far in life before, have you? I was talking with a pastor friend of mine. Oh, ye, 32 years ago we were talking, and he was pastoring, which happened to be at the time probably the largest church in this town. And um, we were just taking this walk, and I'm just like, man, the church out there at Jerome Prairie, you know, we started with, a, 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 you know, they had like 60 people show up for a, for a candidating meeting, and then about 40 showed up after that. I'm not sure what that was about. But, but it started to grow, you know, and these people started to come. And, and I'm like, hey, you know, it, you know what we were doing in Nevada versus here, it's, 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 it's way past me. I, I, I've never been with a church this large. It was like, making a hundred, right? He goes, neither have I. It's so funny. You look at somebody else and you think, oh, they're doing life so good. They're, they're in this spot and they, they, they haven't been there either. None of us have been this old before. <laughs> None of us have been through something. We may have experienced a trial that would be similar to what you're going through, but he's got a newer one for you, right? Listen. Learning of Jesus can provide you a yoke of rest. He said, learn of me. It's interesting. He doesn't say, learn about me. Learn more. Now, we should, but I don't think that's the point of this phrase. I, I can know the path. I've been in church Mom says, since the Sunday after I was born, which is 11 o'clock on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Something about a preacher starting right there. So I learned the path. I learned some of the path of Christ in my own home. But you have to learn the person. Somebody else can't learn him to you. Am I making any sense? You're walking this thing out. And so the question is, do you know who he is? Look what he says. I am gentle and humble in heart. The whole thing, so much of what I'm declaring to you about following Jesus has to come back to knowing him. Because everything else I say is ridiculous <laughs> unless you know him. What he asked me is like, I don't want to be part of that. But, but if you know him, like, no, no. I want to be a part of that. 
Have, I mean, have you ever been around people that's like, they're just the life of the party, and you, you, you want to go to a party because they're going to be there. That, that, that kind of person. Jesus was like that. He, he drew a crowd wherever he went. And there are some things that he would say that nah, could scatter a crowd pretty quick. But, but he was going someplace, and he says, I want you to learn from me. Because what? Because there's a place of rest. But I have to learn it from him. I have to learn it of him. And, and this may be hard because some of you are so much older than me. I felt good to say that. Some of you are so much older than me. <laughs> you have to keep learning to be a learner if you're going to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Is that true? You're never done? A friend of mine was brought around to help Dr. John Mitchell. John was preaching and teaching at Multnomah up until about 95. But at that point, we didn't like John driving anymore. Some of you have some parents like that. So he was, this, this man was hired to be his driver, and he, so he took him to this restaurant, and there was a couple of pastors that were meeting, and he was talking about this, and John, John Dr., Dr. Mitchell, Jack, however you want to call him, he, he says, wow, sometimes I feel like I don't even love the Lord. And you're like, if he doesn't love the Lord, then I'm not saved. <laughs> you know what I mean? Do you, you follow what I'm trying to say? Here's this, this idea that this person has been walking with Jesus for this long, and what? They're still learning. If you quit learning, let's just go ahead and put the dirt on the top of the box. Here's your dad. There, there's life to be lived out here. He says, I'm gentle and humble in heart. <laughs> Listen, some of you right now are petrified with what Jesus might ask you to do. If I really said yes to God, he, who knows what he might do? He, he might send me to deepest, darkest Africa. Been there, done that. It was pretty cool. Other than their way too spicy food, which some people said was just fine. <laughs> he, he might send you to the remotest part of the jungle. Been there, done that. It was cool. Some of our greatest stories have come from the deepest, darkest jungle. Did, I, did, did my wife marry me to do that? No. <laughs> just, just want to clarify that in case somebody asks her. No. But did God meet us on that journey? Yeah. We were still learning what he has for you as you say yes to him. If you're wrestling with this issue that I'm talking about today, it's because you don't fully know the I am. And, and I can't say I, I fully know the I am. I, I know enough to know he's awesome and I can trust him and he's worked glorious things in my life. And yet the, the next day is another day and I have to remember who he is. I have to keep learning. What? He says, I'm gentle and I'm humble. I, I won't lord it over you. I'm not, I'm going to bring you to this place as a disciple. How, how much simpler can I make it? Jesus can be trusted, right? You're trusting people you're working with. You work with them. You know better, <laughs> right? You know, you, you've trusted companies you've worked for. I used to have this one I worked for in Dallas, Oregon. You took your paycheck to the bank, which was across the street from the grocery store I was working for, and the teller would take the paycheck, where we had you know, the company operated their business, and take it to the head person of the bank, and you could literally watch this conversation take place. Are we cashing these checks today? I kept working for them. And praise the Lord, the bank kept cashing them, but they were going under. But, but do you, I don't know if I'm making any sense, but there's a Savior who owns it all, who loves you this much. You can trust him. So he says, learn from me. When he said, follow me, I'll make you a fisher of men. 
Friends, what I'm inviting you to as a disciple of Jesus Christ is not a head game. It, it's a lifestyle of trust. <laughs> when Jesus showed up, what, what did he what was his original message? Two words. Three, actually. Repent and believe. And so it says he read Matthew 4. Verse 17, repent and believe. And if you'll follow me, I'll, I'll make, just keep turning to me, keep believing me, and we'll walk this thing out. You ever wonder what it was like to be one of the 12? I think we look at that and think, oh, that'd be cool. I think there were some times when they didn't think that was so cool. <laughs> there are some situations where you're like, oh, what is he going to do? And you may be in one of those today, but I'm here to tell you, if you learn to follow him, and so, so the very first thing I need to tell you, again, afresh, is do you believe him? H- have you believed him? Are you yoked to him? Have you said, I want Jesus Christ as my master? If that's not the spot where you're at, the rest of the stuff I have to say doesn't make any sense at all. But if he's your master, if he's the one who you're yoked to, then I'm going to walk this out with him. I need to embrace his yoke. I need to trust his person. I need to walk in his plan. And it's a process. See, I I can reach this point on a Sunday morning. I have to reach mine earlier on a Sunday morning, right? We're like, hey, he's good, he's good, he's good, he's great, so let's go. But that doesn't mean you always wake up that way, right? Can can I? Hebrews chapter 6, verses 11 and 12. I've always drawn encouragement from these. Like to read with me, you can. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence so as to realize the full assurance of hope until the end. Okay, don't, don't stop until we're home, right? Why? So that you will not be sluggish. Isn't that great? It's in your Bible. Sluggish. But be imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Now, I've listened to some TV preachers, and I've listened to some street preachers, and I've listened to some other folks, and sometimes faith is presented as, if you just believe it, you just name it, you just claim it, you're going to possess it, it's yours right now, let's go! The book says, through faith and, what? What's it say there? Patience. Oh, you mean I have to wait? This thing doesn't happen, it's, it's a process he's taking me through. Some of you have been in this process a long time. That's not an insult. I I think you ought to be giving him glory because he's been gracing you for all these decades. But but don't turn on him. Trust him. Walk this process out. Learning is a process. It's not an event. It's something we're continuing to practice. As I learn of Jesus, I'm not speaking of facts. Even those are good to know. I'm speaking of the character of the one I've come to trust, of the person, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he declares it, this promise, and you will find rest for your souls. If you'll learn of me, you'll find rest. <laughs> you, you, we're familiar with that term around here. It's called Eureka. It's a place they... They named in California, right? No, that's just because they found gold. All right, that's, you know, I found it! That's what Eureka means. That that was the the, the term right here. It means what? I found it. The the joy of finding something that you deeply value is what? Rest is not just given. It's found. Rest is found. He, he gives it. There's sometimes I can't find words. But maybe you know what I'm talking about. There's something for you to experience to find 
the rest in the place that you're in. There's a rest there. He's already given it. He's promised it. But, but I need to find, how do I enter into this in this process with that person, <laughs> with this situation, with that problem? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Can I find rest there? Am I, am I going to learn from him there? Hudson Taylor, J. Hudson Taylor, which is actually the son of Hudson Taylor, overseeing a mission of hundreds of people in Africa. And he talked about, how do you do that? And his quote was this, just roll your burdens onto the Lord. He, he's the one who's going to carry that. You learn it, you find it, it's available. As he said what? Verse 30. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. The yoke of the believer is Christ's yoke. I'm going to trust him. I'm going to trust him. Because it belongs to him. Do you, do you see this? It's it easy and it's light. When you're loked to Christ, you find all that you need. You're not alone because you're yoked to Christ. I'm not saying there's not hardship, there's not difficulty, because the book says there is. But there's an awful lot of time also when I see people who present this Christian life, and it is a drag. It is, oh, it's so hard. It's so bad. It's so, you know. As a young person, when I hear some people talk about Jesus, I still remember this. Sorry, Mom. Uh, there were some people who would talk about my Savior but who had faces so long they could suck oatmeal out of a vase. I mean, they did not know the joy of the Lord. It, it wasn't easy and light. They weren't walking in a confidence in Christ that says, hey, he's awesome. I still remember when this took over, this awesome widow we had in our church. But she was, at the time that I met her, this was my perception as a child. You remember some of those things. Everybody's older, uglier, more crippled, whatever. You remember the child. She, every Sunday, she was in black. She was a widow, but she'd been a widow for a long time. Every Sunday, she was in black. And she came down with cancer. And she began wearing color. She went, you know what? I'm going to see Jesus. And all of a sudden, her change in her mind from what she'd lost or what she was wishing she could have to who I'm going to see, I've got a celebration to be a part of. Are you living that way? My burdens, my yoke, his yoke is easy. It means it fits. You know, if Jesus, as a carpenter, was to put a little sign out in front of, of the shop and say, my yokes fit. It works. That's, that's, that's the principle he's, he's saying there. Listen. If you're trying rather than trusting, we talked about this a little bit last week, you're tired. But if you're harnessed with Christ, he's pulling with you, trying, exhausts you, a trusting releases you into the energy and the power and the fullness of Christ. <clears throat> Psalms 46.10 Cease striving and know that I'm God and I'll be exalted in the earth. I will be exalted among the nations. When? When I rest in Him. Because if I'm not resting, I'm not bringing Him glory to the one who said, rest. I've got this. I've got this. I don't know where you are. I don't know how weary you are. But I know this. You can trust him. I'm continuing to learn it. Okay? We're in a process. We talked about that. But you can trust him. Someone said that Christ is life without Christ. It's this hopeless end. But life 
with Christ is an endless hope. Amen? So let's rest in him because Jesus Christ is the only source of true rest. True rest. Lord willing, next week I'll talk to you a few steps. How do I practice this in a world that's so unrestful, in a world that's so rushed? So I want to go to with a few of the principles. But let's just come to him this morning. And I just ask those who are preparing the elements, if they will go and prepare them, that we might partake of his work together. Lord, we come. <sighs> it is so easy to worry rather than rest, rather than worship. <laughs> You've called us to this place. You've commanded us to come. Forgive us for being so slow to embrace it. So slow so to rejoice in it, to believe that your burden is light, it's easy, that you, you have something to fit our lives, it's the appropriate thing. Lord, I, I'm praying right now for some of my brothers and sisters, for lack of a better term, who are arguing with you about what you've done in their life or what you haven't yet done. And I'm just asking that you, by your spirit, would bring us to this place of rest. That you're enough to believe it, to rejoice in it, to walk it out with you. Lord, there's a struggle going on. And I thank you that you're patient. And we come to you we rest. You're enough. We believe that. In our head, help us learn that in our heart and in our lifestyle. That we can rejoice and bring you glory. Because you're awesome. You are our rest. Amen.